So welcome everyone. We're glad you could join us for this panel discussion that's going to describe UTA Maverick resources for startup success. This panel is part of UTA's annual Startup Con event. I'm Kim Mayer. I'm Associate Vice President for Research and Executive Director of our Center for Entrepreneurship and Economic Innovation here at UTA. I have the great joy of moderating this panel session, and we have a terrific group of people who are joining us. Um, our goal for this session is to share with you some helpful information about several key resources that UTA students and our community can tap into as they launch and build new companies. If we have time, we'll wrap up our session by discussing the role that each of these resources plays in building our North Texas entrepreneurship ecosystem. So let me begin our discussion by asking each of our panelists to briefly introduce themselves. And I'll remind our panelists, please give us your name, title, and affiliation. And if you'd like to let us know why you're inspired to work with students and entrepreneurs, that would be great. So Terry Schultz, can you please start us off? Hi everyone, I'm Terry Schultz and I am Director of Innovation and Commercialization at UT Arlington. Um, that is our tech transfer office and um, we, besides handling the inventions created on campus, we work with partners like Tech Fort Worth to provide entrepreneurship workshop um, workshops for students and faculty and anyone interested in entrepreneurship um, and some other um, programs that we'll talk about a little bit later. Why am, am I inspired to work with students um, in entrepreneurship? Um, I think this, this younger generation of students has a, is very entrepreneurial minded generally, and it's just exciting to see their, um, their interest and enthusiasm for you know, making a difference and, and being entrepreneurs. Thanks, Terry. So that's a, a great lead in to Devin Peplow, who is our representative from Tech Fort Worth today. Hi, everyone. My name is Devin Peplow. I'm the program manager for Tech Fort Worth. Um, Tech Fort Worth is a nonprofit incubator and accelerator in the Fort Worth area. And like Terry said, we partner with UTA to bring um, a couple different programs to campus, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but I think my inspiration for working with students and students in particular with entrepreneurship is because um, I'm a recent graduate. I graduated in 2019 and I studied entrepreneurship during my undergrad. Um, and it was people like you see in the room here that really helped me find my passion in life. And so I want to give back. Thanks, Devin. And now we'll ask Lolene Martins Crane to introduce herself. Hi, everybody. So glad to be here with everyone. And uh, again, my name is Lily Martins Crane, and I'm the director of the Career Development Center at UTA. And um, I think from a career development center, uh, the opportunity that we have to actually talk with students and help them to discover their journey and their career path is always going to be a passion for everyone that works at the center. And more importantly, I think specifically around entrepreneurship and entrepreneurs, not only helping students to understand the kind of the core competencies required for success for the, that role in that future. And it's also about working with entrepreneur organizations and helping to make those connections for our employers and for our students. So we're super excited to, to talk to all students. You know, every single group of students has their own niche and their own needs. And we're here to service all of those, uh, especially this group around the core competencies for success. Fantastic, Loleen a great resource for our students. And now, Patrick, would you please introduce yourself? Well, greetings, everyone. I'm Patrick Alcorn, and I'm the director of the Veterans Business Outreach Center here at the University of Texas at Arlington. Uh, although I am a campus resource, I'm more of a community resource, and my community extends all the way up into the state of Oklahoma and the state of Arkansas, as well as here in the state of Texas. And uh, VBOC, as we're better known, is the premier resource for education, training, and inspiration to empower transitioning veterans, disabled veterans, National Guard and Reserve component members, and their spouses to become business owners. Uh, and the role that we play is specifically to help the community understand the viability of being entrepreneurs. So I think our most value add is that we are direct connection for the community to the U.S. Small Business Administration as a U.S. Small Business Administration and partner. 
Thanks, Patrick. And I know our audience is going to be thrilled to learn more about VBOC. It's a, it's a terrific resource here at UTA and for our entire ecosystem in North Texas and beyond. So I look forward to learning more. So I'm thrilled that all of you are here today, and I'd like to start our discussion. Patrick started to get into this by covering some of the practicalities of how people engage with you and when is the best. So I'm hoping that each of you can spend just a few minutes telling us about the resources that you represent. Um, and as you describe it, I'd ask that you try to hit on how someone taps into your resource. Um, what's the best stage for them to tap in? And in other words, when do you think it's the when should they interact with you that they will get the the best um, and the most out of that experience of engaging with you? So I think I'd like to start with Terry on this question. As you're thinking about Epic Mavs and Deep Dive in particular, um, as well as the Venture Mentor Service, could you describe those to us just a little bit and then answer those questions? Absolutely. Um, Epic Mavs and Deep Dive are two programs that UTA has developed um, in our through our partnership with Tech for Earth and Epic Mavs. Epic stands for Entrepreneurial, Innovative, and Collaborative Mavericks because UTA are Mavericks. Mavericks are Trailblazers, so it's a it's a very appropriate name I think for our our workshop series. Um, Epic Mavs is a workshop series that happens weekly during the long semester, so every fall and spring. We have it weekly in right now in our startup lounge, which is a space meant for entrepreneurs to come and hang out and come to Epic Mavs and other programs um, that are related to Epic Mavs. The workshop series is we just every week we come together and we talk about a topic that is relevant to the entrepreneurial mindset or being an entrepreneur or skills that entrepreneurs might want to have. Um, we don't have the exact same programming every semester. We change it up. We, we invite speakers in who are experts on the topic and um, we like it to be very interactive. So we try to avoid a lot of PowerPoint presentation lecture type things. We like to have our participants ask questions and participate a lot with us. And it's been a great program. It's been going on for, I think, four or five years. I, I can't remember exactly when we started it, but um, and it's open to anybody on campus, faculty, students, staff, and also anybody in the community. Um, and it's no charge. Um, we just come together and, and have great conversations. And then deep dive is um, basically a deeper dive of Epic Mavs. It's a mini accelerator program. It takes place for seven weeks during the summer and um, people with business ideas come and really work on their business ideas and go through things like the business model canvas and um, the value proposition and all of those things and they do homework and, and it's a very intensive program and we've had some really great participants in that program. Um, and then the VMS NTX mentoring service is a team-based mentoring program that is based on the program that MIT has been running there for the past 20 years. Um, and we partnered with UT Dallas and UT Southwestern to offer the, the venture mentoring service in North Texas. That's why it's VMS NTX. We have um, been up and running for a year. We launched a year ago and it's for any ventures that have a, some kind of a tie to one of the universities and it's actually being operated UT system wide. All of the UT system institutions have implemented this program in, in some shape or form. So how to how to um, how does someone tap into this resource? So Epic Maps, you can come anytime. You don't have to come every time. Anytime a topic is of interest, you can come and just hang out with us and have conversation. And um, it's a really great group of people that, that gathers every week. For Deep Dive, uh, you have a team. You need to have a team with a business idea and you have to commit to coming every week. But anybody, it doesn't have to be even a UTA student, um, any, anybody who wants to participate in Deep Dive can come and participate. And like I said, the VMS NTX, um, they need to have some kind of tie um, and can be, we'd like them to be a little bit further along than just an idea to participate. 
Um, the idea for that program is to develop the entrepreneur. So, um, you know, they're, they're working on their business and, and getting advice and mentoring from their team of mentors. Um, but we like them to be really working on an actual some kind of business and trying to move forward with that. So a little bit further along than, an, than just an idea, although some have started with just an idea um, and any stage beyond that. So. Thanks, Terry. As, as a quick follow up. So you mentioned there's no charge for Epic Mavs and anyone can come and deep dive. Anyone can participate. And I, presumably there's no charge for deep dive either. Correct. And then for VMS NTX, there's no charge to participate. Is there a vetting process for VMS? There, there's an application and then there's kind of an onboarding. So there's kind of some parameters that the mentors and the ventures each agree on things like confidentiality and um, that you'll participate and um, take it seriously, that sort of thing, but no charge. Um, so there is, a, there is a bit of a vetting process. Yeah. Terrific. Thanks, Terry. Sure. So Lolene, how about if you go next, could you tell us a little bit more about how folks engage with the Lockheed Martin Career Development Center? Yeah, absolutely. So our services are free, obviously, for students, and they are free for alumni. So want to make sure that folks understand that as well. Um, we have everything from a one-stop shop in order to help students to develop and to um, hone in on their, their skills and really explore want to go with regards to their career. So we have everything from one on one career coaching appointments. Um, we also helped um, uh, several folks to develop a pitch, um, especially around entrepreneurship and what it is that your idea and how do you convey that passion in um, 2018, 2019. We had over about 800 events overall for all of our different students and they fall into the categories of development and workshop opportunities week on week. We also ha have foundational student career services, everything from mock interviews to one on one appointments um, to strategies to discover really my motivational fit and where do I want to go in my career. Uh, we have many student and employer engagement events and programs. We had over 500 employers back in the day when we were on campus that came to campus and actually spent time with our students, either in sessions or employee office, office hours, or helping us again in the development opportunities or having information sessions with our students. We also have platforms like Handshake, and Handshake is a platform where we post all of our positions, part-time positions and internships. And that is open to all students, again, and alumni. And we have online assessments also that help to identify your core values, motivational fit, and maybe some, some reflection opportunities for individuals. We do also have a MAV Mentors Program. And what we're starting to see are circles and affinity groups that are forming in that MAV Mentors Program. Um, and we're working with the colleges as well to maybe form some separate affinity groups, which an entrepreneur affinity group in MAV Mentors would be an awesome thing if somebody would like to start that too. So I just wanted to offer up all all of the different services that we have for all of our students and then from an entrepreneurship so if an organization comes and wants to partner with the the career center absolutely we partner with um, all employers there is a vetting process for employers that are wanting to partner with us simply because we want to make sure that it is valid that the um, the employer will have a, a good um, experience for our students and we follow some criteria that every single employer is vetted that is in our system. And right now we have about 15,000 employers overall and several of them, um, several hundred uh, that we partner with one on one for additional services. So how, anybody we are online, we can you can look us up on the website. We've got a phone number. You can just call the, the Career Development Center and we will answer and we will get you connected in any way that you need to be connected with us, whether you're a, an organization or whether you're a student and alumni. And, um, you know, when to engage, that is probably one of the biggest discussions that we continue to have in trying to encourage the minute you come to campus, whether you're a transfer student or um, whether you are a freshman, we encourage that come come talk to the center, get engaged with us so, um, so that we can help, so that we can guide, so that we can coach, so that we can make connections for you with employers. That becomes really important for us. And, you know, we have several students that sometimes will come in December and say, I need help, or in December of their graduating year and say, you know, this is not really what I wanted to go do. So 
we can try to help you at your graduation time, but um, we really encourage students to come to us really earlier. Um, and if you're coming in as a freshman, definitely to join us as a freshman so we can start to have that collaborative conversation and strategic conversation early on. That is terrific. And I heard so many things that you mentioned there that are really transferable skills throughout your yes. career, whether you're planning on being an entrepreneur or working with someone else. And that is absolutely right. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest things that we're really trying to focus in on is what I call power skills. They're not soft skills. They are power skills because they're the hardest skills to learn and to focus in on. And um, for entrepreneurs, there is a skill set. And I think all of us can probably identify some of those key core skills that are going to be critical for success, especially for students in this entrepreneurial world. That's absolutely, right. absolutely. And I hope we'll have a chance to talk yeah. a little bit about those coming up soon. Thanks, Lonely. Patrick, would you please tell us a little bit more about VBOC? Awesome. Thank you so much. And, and thank you, Lolene and, and Teresa, for sharing uh, what you what you all do. It's it's incredible. Uh, because the VBOC, the Veterans Business Outreach Center, as an SBA resource partner, we spend about 85% of our time in the community. But you can find us on campus in the UTA College of Business on the sixth floor. Uh, and if you know UTA, sixth floor is only on one half of the College of Business building. So if you're on the wrong end of the building, there is no sixth floor. Uh, but I did want to say that. Uh, and, and we help everyone from, I, I like to call it from the rooter to the tutor. So you can actually come to us with just an ideal. We have a three-step intake process that begins with an entrepreneurial assessment. Then it goes from an entrepreneurial assessment to we require you to do a one-page business plan and a one-page marketing plan. And the purpose of those two one-page plans is not so much so that you can uh, tell us all about the business that you have in mind, but more so we can understand what it is that you know about business and entrepreneurship. So we use that one page assessment to step back and really figure out what your needs are. Uh, our primary role is to increase your awareness of all of the available government resources as it relates to the US Small Business Administration and all those resources available through the SBA to connect you to those resources and to inspire you to utilize those resources. And I guess the best example I can give is the SBA's Office of Disaster Assistance has been around for over 50 years and not many people are aware of it because they typically only work and when a disaster occurs, which only typically happens in a region of the country or an area of the country. But as you all know, we're in a disaster now that's affected the entire country and there's so many businesses that could have survived a lot more effectively and efficiently had they already had a relationship with the U.S. Small Business Administration and the Office of Disaster Assistance and having a disaster plan. Uh, my office has a disaster plan. So when the coronavirus hit and we found ourselves in the midst of this COVID-19 environment, we were all we did was flip a switch and we were already in mode knowing what we were going to do in the midst of this disaster scenario because we had a disaster plan. Uh, but with that said, we connect, uh, we have the ability to connect you to all the SBA resource partners, including SCORE mentors. These are individuals who've been there and done that, uh, and they're willing to stand side by side with you for absolutely free to help you uh, massage your ideal and move your business forward. Small Business Development Center and Women's Business Center advisors. Uh, these are advisors that are typically on our local community college campuses in and around us as well that are very familiar with the business plan process and entrepreneurial startup process. And then also the, the lenders. The SBA has a full list of guaranteed lenders to help get access to capital. And so we can connect you to those lenders and help you to make sure that you're fully vetted and ready for those lending uh, those lending conversations. Specifically, we spend that 85% of our time on military installations in Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas, teaching a two-day introduction to entrepreneurship course. But we teach that same course off the military installation in the area twice a year. So in May every year and in November every year, we teach it right here on the campus uh, at UTA, or, or at least nearby the campus here at UTA. Uh, so when we talk about helping everyone from the startup phase all the way up, you could just 
think that entrepreneurship is right for you. And our course is designed to help you make that decision. When you come out of our introductory course, you'll answer this question in one of three ways. Yes, entrepreneurship is right for me. No, entrepreneurship is not right for me. Or oh, wow, what a great, what a great um, myriad of information and resources. I need to learn more before I make that decision. So that's one of three answers uh, that you'll come out with. Uh, we typically do or have done since 2016 what we call a third Thursday think tank, which is a mastermind group where we bring small business owners in together uh, and let them mastermind with one another sort of as a small board of directors to share ideals. Uh, last year, we we uh, married with uh, Teresa over at the Startup Lounge and her epic maths and so typically we'll show up on the third thursday at epic maths and just join in their conversation uh join in their conversation over there uh that's what we look like we've helped a little over 2700 uh, small businesses in the area that we're responsible for and we've done a we've taught a little more than 173 courses uh with a little over 102 outreach events uh, and in fact, we just finished our major outreach event, which we do every November during National Veterans Small Business Week, which is that week prior to Veterans Day uh, in, in November, where we train uh, veterans. So we had 427 veterans that we just trained uh, just last week, uh, uh, Monday through Thursday of last week. Fantastic, Patrick. Thank you. It's great to hear those numbers. and. Um, I'm so glad that we have on campus access to this resource that lets our entrepreneurs and students tap into the Small Business Administration and all of the various tools, VBOC, the SBDCs, and all of the other things that they can tap into for free and where they can get all of this expert advice and guidance. Um, and I'm signing up for one of those two-day courses. I'll be in the May course. I'm going to try that out and see. So now, Devin, could you please tell us a little bit about Tech Fort Worth? Of course. So, like I said earlier, Tech Fort Worth is a nonprofit incubator accelerator in the area, um, but we have a bunch of different programs that really can benefit any entrepreneur, whether you have an idea and haven't even drawn it out yet, or if you're in your third year of operation and you're trying to scale it globally, or you're looking for raising your first round of investments. So, really, we serve that broad range of entrepreneur. Um, kind of diving into each of those programs. I'll just do kind of a 101 overview of them. Um, but first off, if you have just an idea, um, if you aren't in time to do the summer Epic Mav deep dive program, you can do the Tech Fort Worth Think Lab program. And that's going to be um, kind of hosted by the same person, Hayden Blackburn, the executive director uh, Tech Fort Worth, and he does Think Lab for 12 to 16 weeks, three times a year, um, and that is kind of a self-paced, cohort-based accelerator to really build the bones of your company. Um, after Think Lab, once you graduate that program or once you graduate Epic Maps Deep Dives, then you're eligible for our incubator programs, Smart Start and Fast Forward. Um, and with those two programs, Smart Start really focuses on coaching, finding you resources, helping you get funding, um, and all of that middle territory really of growing a company after you get past the idea phase, once you talk to the customers, once you have those bones made. Um, and then if you graduate from Smart Start, Smart Start can last anywhere from a year to five years. Um, we have two clients currently in our next program, which is Fast Forward, and that focuses more so on rapid growth going global that those those final stages almost um, final stages in a way but um, for some rapid growth can last many many years um, so those are our three huge programs for our clients um, those are our three incubator accelerator programs that are paid they range from think lab ranges from about a thousand dollars for the whole 16 week course um, to smart start and fast forward or around a thousand dollars a quarter um, and then some of our other programs, we have a mentorship program called M Crew, where um, once you've gone through Think Lab or Epic Mavs Deep Dives, once you've gone through an accelerator program, you're eligible for that. Um, and really the only prereq 
prerequisite for that is being coachable. Um, as most of our programs, I think for most people here, um, if you have that coachability aspect, you're in a great place to go into most of our programs. Um, but with M crew, that is a, I believe it's a four month long mentorship program where you get assigned five mentors just for you. They're all industry experts, um, that'll help you on your biggest barriers to growth. Um, and you meet once a week for, th or once a month for three hours. Yeah. For four months. Um, and then, the other programs that I wanted to talk about, I just want to make sure that I hit all of them. Um, one of the other really cool programs that we have is Cowtown Angels. So Cowtown Angels is the local angel investing group in Fort Worth. Um, they have nine investment cycles a year. Um, they, you know, if you've ever seen Shark Tank, we call them a dolphin tank. They are so focused on giving feedback and helping the entrepreneur and the company grow. Um, so again, they have nine cycles a year where they whittle down from 30 different entrepreneur applications to have four entrepreneurs come in um, and pitch to them their ideas if they're looking for a new raise um, and they're trying to get to that next growth period. Um, and so I can answer more questions about Cowtown Angels later, but that is also a program of Tech Fort Worth. And we do a lot of coaching with UTA um, students and companies on how to get pitch ready to go in front of those angels and to go in front of other angel groups. Um, attached on to Epic Mavs, we do, Tech Fort Worth does have office hours that you are all able to take advantage of, um, and we can get you those hours as well. But the last program that I want to highlight is a brand new one. It's for minority entrepreneurs um, that have an extra level of barriers to entry. We started a brand new program called Biz Brainstorm, where the entire Tech Fort Worth team takes 60 to 90 minutes to analyze your company and give you a complimentary coaching session. Um, we've been doing that once a month and just the most incredible companies we've seen through that. So I just wanted to give a quick highlight to that. Um, yeah, and I think those are most of our programs. We have a couple extra perks that you can take advantage of, the office hours that I've said, and then also another perk of being a client with Tech Fort Worth and being in any of those programs is you get access to 10,000 credits, dollars of TMAC services. So if you're an entrepreneur that is building a prototype, uh, TMAC can help you build that prototype out and you'll get $10,000 worth of prototyping hours with them. Yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Devin. No, it's a fantastic, it's such a long list of things that Tech Fort Worth and Cowtown Angels um, offer to UTA students in the UTA community, this entire North Texas ecosystem. Um, it's just a fantastic set of resources and it's great to hear. And uh, I loved that you brought up coachability and I think that's a word that we all tend to use. Um, and it really just means, you know, someone who can take in advice, who can listen and hear the advice, take it in and actually implement on it um, and isn't doesn't shut down when they hear advice. Um, so thank you for sharing all of that. So I'm going to ask now that we move into um, our next theme, if you will, of questions. Now that everyone knows how to tap into your resources, I'm sure that uh, our audience would love to hear a little bit more about what's expected of them and the commitments that they have to make to really engage with each of you. Um, some of you touched on this already a little bit, so I might ask if, you know, if we keep this a bit shorter than our, our previous answers, but I'll ask each of you to think about if you have any expectations for the students or entrepreneurs that engage with you and what commitments are required when they do engage. So let me start this time with Patrick. Yeah, thank you. Uh, for us, it, the engagement is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're working with individuals who hope to be entrepreneurs and hope to own their own businesses. So our, expect, our expectation is simple. We run at your, at your speed. Uh, as long as you continue to tap into us for resources, we'll move at that pace. When you slow down, we slow down. So our expectation is that You'll do the assignments that we assign to you. You'll do the 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 research. You'll uh, you'll do the legwork. Once you've done the legwork, you'll tap back into us, and then we can take you to the next step and the next step and the next step. And we'll continue to sit on a uh, until we hear back from you again. We'll ping you every now and then just to make sure you haven't 
disappeared off the face of the earth. But beyond that, it's up to you to guide us uh, to 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 manage the pace of our interaction one with another. So the bottom line is just do the assignments that we ask you to do. They're pretty simple assignments. We keep them short. We only give you assignments that should take you a couple of days to get done to get back with us. Uh, and that's how it works. It's pretty straightforward. Thanks, Patrick. And all of those assignments obviously are designed to help you grow your business, to launch exactly. and grow your business. So they're they're not just random homework assignments. They're really targeted to what you need to get done. So exactly. Thanks, Patrick. So Devin, could you do the same thing for Tech Fort Worth and and tell us what expectations and commitments people can expect with you? Yeah, of course. So um I mean, truly, I think what everybody yeah, is saying is the coachability. We really, um, from our first one-on-one -on -one sessions with our entrepreneurs, um, before you ever decide to enter into a program, um, we sit down with you, go through you know, what you expect of yourself, what we expect of you, um, and really that's when we kind of decide the coachability um, and how much do we want the founder to grow over the next couple months and how much do we want the company to grow over the next few months. Um, yeah. And I mean, something I was thinking even, you know, is it's almost like when you enter into a new program, it's like, okay, you have a blindfold on, you can take the blindfold off and be coachable and, you know, open your eyes to all of these new opportunities, or you can keep the blindfold on and kind of fumble around by yourself. Um, which I think every entrepreneur at any, you know, in any company has had those moments of, I'm going to keep the blindfold on. I know what I want to do. Um, and then they switch over to, okay, now I'm open to coaching. Um, so whatever stage you're in now, don't worry. I would just say that definitely taking that blindfold off will help you scale a lot faster than going it alone. Thanks, Devin. That's definitely helpful advice. <laughs> now I'm going to picture all of us bumbling around with our blindfolds on. <laughs> no, that's a terrific example. Um, Loleen, I think some of the things that Devin and Patrick said made me think about what you had said earlier about helping some of our students go through that self-reflection process and understanding what motivates them and, and what their goals are. So maybe you could jump in next. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I, I echo a little bit about what Patrick said with regards to commitment. You know, the commitment is we are there to meet uh, students where they are. And I think the commitment in anything that we ask about is really about um, come prepared, come engaged, be ready to talk, be ready to be open. We can help, we can help uh, guide. Um, and then going back to this coachability, um, which it is a core competency, right? This ability to take in feedback. So I think that's, that's really important. So um, the, um, our, our commitment is, is meeting them and guiding and shepherding um, these, the students and um, as I said, I think I echo a lot of where Patrick is um, with his community and helping them along. Yeah, that's very helpful. And, and I, I'm looking forward to learning even more about the Career Development Center myself. So this is a fantastic conversation. Um, Terry, I'm going to visit you last with this question. So when folks are inter engaging with Epic Mavs or Deep Dive or with VMS NTX, um, what expectations and commitments are involved with each of those programs? Sure. So for Epic Mavs, I think really the expectation is that you come with curiosity, wanting to learn. You know, it, those, the people who come to Epic Mavs or anybody who might think entrepreneurship might be an option or they just want to know what it is, they, they didn't, they don't know and they want to learn more. I mean, Epic Mavs, it's engage with the group or don't just come and listen. So not, not high expectations. Um, come and listen and learn is what Epic Mass is all about. Um, for Deep Dive, we do expect that um, the, the team that is participating um, has a business idea and that at least one member of the team will participate in every session of Deep Dive. And those sessions are usually, I think about two and a half, three hours long, once a week for seven weeks. And then that they will you know, be engaged and work on the homework assignments. Um, you know, if they have to do customer discovery or something like that during a week to kind of learn how that goes, um, that they would actually do some of that so they can come back and talk through what they learned in that customer discovery. And then for VMS, NTX, um, again, the focus of that program is really to develop the entrepreneur. And so we expect that the entrepreneurs will and the ventures will 
schedule the meetings with their mentors that the, the mentors or the program isn't going to be chasing them down to get them to set meetings that that they will be setting the meetings and they will be developing an agenda for every meeting and they will be talking about um, for that agenda some challenge or something that they're working on and then the mentors are going to be giving them advice and probably giving them homework to work on for the next i mean the goal is you know what what are you going to do in the next five weeks versus you know your long-term plan so you know between your meetings with your mentors um, and what progress can you make in those five or six weeks or eight weeks or whatever it is and then that the ventures will set the next meeting and they will come having done their homework and really take advantage of you know the great mentors that we have in the program who are experienced in entrepreneurship and many other um, fields and can give really good advice um, to our ventures and help them grow as entrepreneurs. That's terrific. Thanks, Terry. And I, I think what I heard from all of you is that we're really interested in meeting our students and our entrepreneurs where they are when they need us and that it really is highly dependent on them, you know, taking that initiative and being the ones that reach out. We heard that very clearly from Patrick that that's, that's one of the key processes with VBOC is that you have to keep tapping back in, you know, when you're ready to take that next step. So thank you all. That was, that was dynamite. I think I'll just go back around the group one, one more time really quickly and ask you, we all talked about coachability, um, but I might ask borrowing Lolene's, um, phrasing of, of power skills. What's one other power skill that you think that it would be good for an entrepreneurial student to have and why? So let's start with Lolene since it was her word. Gosh, I don't know if I can limit it to one. If I could just quickly go. Pick your favorite. Okay, my favorites would be, um, so we, we talked about coachability, which is really also about feedback and taking feedback and making some changes there. Social and emotional skills become really, really important. Negotiation persuasion skills and uh, risk assessment and there is a financial acumen that needs to happen um, or either to learn or to have folks around you that will help you with your business plan your risk assessment and your ability to kind of manage that plan along the way so those are some of them i've got about 12 others but we'll go with that <laughs> <laughs> no that's great lolene you basically just gave us a um, an outline of what is an entrepreneur? What do we need to have um, in our backpack as we're doing this? Thank you. So Patrick, let's have you go next. What's your one power skill that you'd recommend for entrepreneurial students? Kimberly, I think it's going to be tough for me to put it in one, so I'll, I'll start if I can. One is, is, is to be an entrepreneur, you have to have a be of service attitude and recognize that business is about solving problems. It's not about what you can get for yourself, but it's about what you can do for the market. So the, they, they have to have a, a mindset that says, I want to serve the market in some way, shape or form. I'm solving a problem for the market. But along with that, they have to have an incredible amount of flexibility. And the reason I tie that flexibility to this be of service attitude is because often they may come to the table with one ideal in terms of what they think the market needs, but they need to be flexible enough to shift as they do their research and learn that well, the market really needs this. The market really wants that. And they need to be flexible enough to be able to make that decision to make a change. Does that make sense? That's terrific advice. I mean, I think and I think if you have the be of service attitude, then it makes the adaptability part of it so much easier to bear, right? Because you exactly. know that you really just want to solve that problem and answer that question, however you have to get there. Exactly. So yeah, that's fantastic, Patrick. Thank you. So Devin, let's ask you next. What, what are your one or two? <laughs> one or two. I think all of mine, all of ours could really be summed up into really the power skills of talking and listening and them going hand in hand. Um, specifically, when we walk through our very first accelerator program, um, for the talking and listening section of that, we go through the book Talking to Humans. Um, you know, when you're starting a company, you want to make sure that you're talking to your customers, just like Patrick just said, so that you're not creating a solution in a vacuum sealed box. You don't want to ever launch a solution to the market 
not having what your customers actually want in mind. Um, so definitely that talking and listening. And that also plays into another thing that we really coach on at Tech Fort Worth, which is your pitching skills, putting together your pitch deck. How do you present yourself in front of angels? How do you ask the right questions? How do you answer questions correctly? You know, how do you need to talk to different customers? How do you need to listen to different customers? And how do you take everything you've listened to and then project it back out to the people who want to listen to you. Oh, that's so helpful. I'm going to pay attention to that myself. I think um, one of the greatest pieces of advice I ever got was that listening doesn't mean that you're just waiting for your turn to talk. It really means that you're trying to hear what the other person is saying and, and, and digest it and then you know, figure out what you're going to do next. And I think those improv skills of, you know, being able to take it in and put it back out is is really important for entrepreneurs. Thanks, Devin. So Terry, what about you? What's, what are one or two power skills that you'd recommend? So it's really hard to go last on this one. <laughs> <laughs> All the good ones are taken. Right. But um, the things that came to mind for me were open-mindedness and thinking outside of the box so not getting stuck and Patrick kind of touched on it I think but not not getting stuck not being in love with your technology or your whatever you have and and being able to kind of think of things from other angles and this doesn't fit here but maybe it fits somewhere else or pivoting you know where you're going if you don't have the right the market wasn't what you thought it was um, and another thing that I thought of is being unoffendable, um, which, you know, goes along with coachability, but is also it's an emotional maturity kind of thing, but being unoffendable and taking in the advice and and the, the criticism, the critiques that you might hear at those pitch events or at, when you're pitching to investors and and really being able to think about them and, and put them into practice. So. I think that's really valuable. I love that word too. I'm going to steal it, unoffendable. <laughs> but that that idea that you know we all we all say that our entrepreneurs have to be passionate about what they're doing. That's absolutely true. You have to be passionate about it. It has to make you want to get up every morning and do it. But you can't be so married to it that you can't hear anyone's advice or you can't make that important pivot, like Patrick described, pivoting for the VBOC during the pandemic. And as we've all done with this virtual presentation today of something that we would normally be doing in person with each other on campus. So um, very valuable skills that you guys have all highlighted. Thank you for those insights. Um, next, I'd like us to move into an area of discussing outcomes and successes for our programs. What is it as you're working with each of your, each of your programs and resources, um, what do people most often report to you as an outcome from engaging with you? What do they see as successful? And what do you consider to be a successful outcome? So I think this time I'd like to start with Lolene. Yeah, so, you know, I think um, some of the, the feedback, obviously, that you want to hear is when students come back and they start talking to you about their experiences, getting a job, connecting with an employer. So there's that personal one-on-one -on -one kind of a, uh, a metric that we always look towards and, and have a, you know, we long to hear to make sure that we are making an impact. Now, um, on the more technical side, you know, we do have uh, surveys for every single event that we have. So we try to gather information as much as possible from all of our events to ensure that we're on track and that we are servicing the students and what would change. So we gather a lot of feedback along the way for, um, for our services. We've got about 50 different metrics that we manage with our team on a monthly dashboard um, and also make decisions on a monthly basis. But I can tell you that probably the most important feedback that we receive, although we have all these metrics and we report out on them and we're accountable for so many different things. But when a student calls you up and actually says that, um, hey, you know what, I had that interview and the fact that you worked with me and we did a mock interview or I got through my pitch or I got through my presentation and, you know, I actually got the account or the job. Um, probably those are the, the deepest ones and the most heartfelt ones that, that we take um, around with us. And we know that we've really made a difference. So I think you've got your big, broad stuff. And I think you also have your qualitative, heartfelt moments um, that you know that you're truly making a difference with individuals and really launching students into their future. Right. You know, this is a this is not a this we're transactional we're, we're trying to lift them up and unleash their potential and to see that happen is an amazing thing 
Thanks, Lolene. And I really appreciated that you mentioned the surveys and the metrics and that you use that data to continue to, to improve your, your services and what you offer to the students and employers. And so if I can say anything to our audience, I'd say when you see those surveys come through, please complete them. That's why we're sending you all of those questions and asking for your feedback, because we all do really intend to use it. We, we intend to continue to improve what we're offering to you. So Patrick, perhaps you could go next. What are what are some outcomes that people report from engaging from with with VBOC? So our outcomes align with with our mission of awareness, access, and and inspiration. And so I could just read a couple of the comments that we received. Uh, one from Steve says, "This is exactly what I was looking for. I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to provide me with all of this information." Appreciated and right on the mark. Uh, Patricia says, I just want to say a heartfelt thank you for the awesome day of learning and sharing so much information about entrepreneurship. Uh, and, and then one more that I'll read here, and that was this one. Uh, uh, Abraham says, I went through the entire email and it definitely has everything I was looking for. Thank you so much. With what you gave me, I can definitely say that entrepreneurship is not right for me. So the outcomes that we hope to get is we hope people make uh, a definitive decision about whether or not our, our entrepreneurship is right for them. And if it is right for them, that they connect with our resource partners and move forward in their entrepreneurial journey. Or if they find out that entrepreneurship is not right for them, uh, that that becomes a definitive answer for them, at, at least today. It's a definitive answer for them and they can move on to some other focus area uh, in their life. <laughs> that's terrific, Patrick. Thank you. And that was that's one of the things that I always appreciate. I worked I worked with the Small Business Development Center in North Carolina for a long time. And that was one of the things that I always appreciated about the SBA directed programs. We We collected all of that data and got feedback from everyone who was utilizing the services and we considered the we decided not to become an entrepreneur result just as successful as i decided to become an entrepreneur those are those are equally successful outcomes um so thanks for sharing that patrick that's terrific terry how about if you go next sure yeah um thanks we've had several people who have started at Epic Maths and have started companies there and gone on to participate in things like Deep Dive and even VMS. Um, and I think just being able to come and, and network with people and be among other people who are learning and growing um, are some of the, the things we've heard building their network. Um, and then, you know, what we consider success is, is seeing people continue to come back even if their venture failed they're still trying something else and they continue to come back to these programs to keep learning and keep engaging and then seeing them um, as students start to participate in competitions and succeed in those and then do better even next time take what they've learned from you know the pitch sessions at epic maps or deep dive and put those into their pitches and then even learn from the, the competitions that they um, participate in and just seeing them engage in the resources and, and learn and build their network networks and become part of the network. And I really liked um, what Lola said um, about unleashing the potential, um, seeing them discover their potential and, and use it and unleash it um, is really what we consider success, I think. I, these answers are so inspiring to me. And I think um, part of what you said, Terry, about seeing someone become part of the network is actually so important that, you know, they, they may try something, it may or may not work, or it may or may not resonate with them, they'll come back and try it again. But even, even just going through that process once, now they've become part of this network and they've got other like-minded folks that they can continue to interact with throughout their careers throughout their lifetimes it's it's a fantastic um takeaway message for us today so devin now this time you get to go last during one of these questions that's that's a little challenging but 
Um, what does Tech Fort Worth consider to be an, a successful outcome? And, and what do people think of a success when they engage with you? So I think there's a couple main things that I think we see as outcomes from engaging um, with entrepreneurs. Um, I'm trying to think back to the biggest and the most thanks that we get. And not only, I mean, you know, sometimes you get thanks for things that help somebody off help somebody out that day. Um, but sometimes it's nice getting those things, you know, like two years later and you're like, oh yeah, good. Um, but I think some of the biggest outcomes that we shoot for the entrepreneur to see is that the entrepreneur finds clarity in what is their path to market? How are they going to get their product out there? What are they going to do once it's there? Who are they going to talk to? Um, we really want to see entrepreneurs be able to funnel all of the coaching that they're getting, all of the ideas into an actionable plan. Um, and through that plan and through having that clarity, um, that's probably the biggest outcome. Um, but we also want to see them increase their network during it, really make solid connections through working with us. A lot of our mentors and coaches are pretty well connected in the Fort Worth and larger region area. Um, and so we do try if we can't automatically help them. Um, and even if we can't automatically help them, we still love to get them connected to other people that we think would be interested in helping them um, do that. And then as I said a little bit earlier, another kind of successful outcome is not only the growth of their idea and the growth of their company, but also the growth of the entrepreneur. Um, how have they grown as a leader? How have they grown um, as an individual? And so kind of, yeah, the clarity, the connections, their growth and their company's growth are our big success factors. I think this this group has just hit on so many of the things that make UTA really special. Um, not one of us said what we consider to be the successful outcome is, you know, a $10 million company that, you know, has, that makes the fortune 500. All of us focused on the entrepreneur themselves and the growth of the entrepreneur and that they get something valuable and meaningful out of working with each of you and in building, launching and building their companies um, and growing their ideas. I just, I think that's fantastic. It's something that happens that I think is truly special at UTA. Um, so thank you all for sharing that. Um, so finally, I think I'd like us to spend just a little bit of time. We have um, a little bit less than 10 minutes left in this panel session. And I'd like us to talk a little bit about our North Texas ecosystem. So thinking about you know where we all operate here in this North Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth area, what do you think is your biggest value add to that ecosystem? And then what else would you like to see? What would you like to see more of or new in our ecosystem that would complement what you do? So if I could ask you each to address that, and this time I'll start with Devin since she had to end last time. Wonderful. Okay, so our biggest value add to the North Texas ecosystem, I think the bread and butter of Tech Fort Worth is really helping innovators become founders and launch their innovative solutions. Um, we love to work with anything that has that defensible moat, um, whether that's, you know, patent, patent pending, or just something that's, you know, an industry secret, something that's not already out there. Um, and so technology companies, biotech, medical, ag tech, um, I mean, we have transportation. Um, so I think that's our biggest value add to the ecosystem is really adding in um, coaches, mentors, angels, funding and connections um, to that realm of the entrepreneur. And I think something that we would love to see more of is, um, and I think anybody in the ecosystem would say this, but you know, more of that collaboration between resources. So exactly what we're doing today, exactly with, you know, UTA and Tech Fort Worth and everybody does together is just continuing to build those bonds um, and become, you know, an even more connected ecosystem that can help the entrepreneurs to the best of our abilities. Thanks, Devin. You, now you've given us all something to aspire to, which is fantastic. Um, and we'll, we'll aspire to keep these connections going and, and to leverage each other as we're growing the ecosystem. So Patrick, how about if you go next? Um, what is your biggest value add to our ecosystem and what else would you like to see added? 
So when you think about, again, the fact that we're an SBA resource partner, I think the most exciting thing about our ecosystem here in North Texas and in and around the University of Texas at Arlington is that we have all of the SBA resource partners just a hop, skip, and a jump away from us. So you've got on the Fort Worth side, on the Tarrant County side, you've got Tarrant County Small Business Development Center, and then seven miles in the other direction, you got Dallas County Small Business Development Center. On the Tarrant County side, you've got Tarrant County Score, and then on the Dallas side, you've got Dallas Score. And then you can go up into Denton, and you've got Denton Score, and then going further south. And then you've got the same thing right here on campus, right up the street from me, about, I don't know, I guess you can call it a quarter of a mile away, a block and a half away, You've got the Procurement Technical Assistance Center, which can, which can help folks do government contracting and federal contracting. Uh, you've got the U.S. Patent and Trade Office is right up Interstate 35, which is right here in our neighborhood. So just within a, like a 15 mile radius of the University of Texas at Arlington, you've got immeasurable government resources that are all free and all available to help you uh, do the things that you need to do to get your businesses up and running and keep those businesses going. And then right here on your campus in the College of Business, we connect you to all of those resources. What I think the thing that I would like to see is I would like to see all of those resource partners, and, and we've, we've done this in some respect, but I'd like to see all of those resource partners come together in a, in a single event or a single activity to introduce themselves to the community and so forth. So we've done that for our veteran community. We do that every November, but it would be great to see something like that happen for the for our university community. Thanks, Patrick. And I, I couldn't be more thrilled that you were able to participate today and tell us about the important role that VBOC plays as this gateway to all of these other resources that are available from the SBA. It's fantastic to know that there's one place we can hit where we can find someone who knows someone else at all of these different resources and get us connected. That's terrific. And I'm taking notes from you know, from the Center for Entrepreneurship and Economic Innovation side. I'm taking notes on this request to have some sort of resource um, introductory event so that we can all share with our wider community what it is that we do. So thanks, Patrick, that's terrific. Terry, how about if you go next this time? Sure, so um, I think one of the things that um, the Epic Mavs and Deep Dive programs adds is just helping to spark that interest in people who might just not even know what entrepreneurship is or what it's all about and just coming to start to learn about it and get involved with a group of people who are engaged with each other and helping each other and then you know as we develop the entrepreneur through the programs like deep dive and vms you know we're we're putting people back into the ecosystem that can give back as they learn grow and um and find success, then they can, you know, also mentor others and and become parts of, you know, the companies that are growing behind them. And also, I think um, working together in the partnership with Tech Fort Worth, and also working with UT Southwestern and UT Dallas, and just tying kind of everything together and working together and not working against each other, but realizing that you know we're all in this eco ecosystem together and we can work together to help it grow maybe faster than it would if we were trying to each individually work on our own. And um, like to see, um, I think, just seeing some more entrepreneurs develop so that they're available when those new companies do come, they can you know, be the business guide for those new companies and help them along um, and mentor them and help them grow, so. Thanks, Terry. And then, Loleen, I'm going to give you the last word on this question, and then we'll wrap things up. Okay, great. So, you know, I think for us, obviously, you know, getting the students or helping the students to become workforce ready becomes a really big goal for us. And I think the other piece of that, right, we're interlocked with the University of Texas providing um, such wonderful degree and degree plans, such as nursing and ed education and engineering, which are key, especially in, in, in within Texas. 
Um, preparing confident students to be able to go into the market, I think, is another one of those important things that we provide. Um, I think definitely we're promoting the economy by helping to employers connect with their students and have them um, go into those those particular roles. We have over 230,000 alumni in the DFW alone. So I think that's a really compelling story that we always don't want to lose sight of, that we are um, providing this community and this region with just uh, some top talent. I know our team, <clears throat> my team reaches out to about 100 to 200 employers a month to really try to make those connections. And I might be moving, you know, just understand that, you know, entrepreneurship, that is a pillar in our um, employer relations team. So there is a dedicated pillar for startups and entrepreneurship and small business. So we actually dedicate resources in order to identify employers to help us and to connect with students. Um, so I think all of those things are pieces that we can provide or do provide to the, to the ecosystem. And I think... Um, I think additional moving forward, uh, what I would love to see is is growing the number of internships, but beyond internships, you know, having these conversations with employers um, that we've got to start really rethinking what those um, experiences look like, more like project based learning. So getting a group of people, employer, having that hands on learning and pulling back, not necessarily as formal internships. We still want that, right? But there, I think there's a whole lot of other opportunities to partner with employers, especially entrepreneurs, to get some folks and then some mentoring opportunities there. Um, creating more purposeful links and systems among high schools, colleges, and workforce opportunities and starting to really, um, that blockchain and, and really making those systems work together so that, that it's not one pillar versus another pillar versus another pillar, but that we're actually working among those groups in a tighter way. Um, I see kind of moving into and a lot of discussion around translating the needs of the employer a whole lot easier so that we're making the connections between what students are getting, um, you know, the conversations we're having in high school, what they're getting in the classroom and what are the skills that are being developed and that automatically um, a closer, tighter translation for employers and bridging um, all of those entities. Agility within institutions, I think is a, is a big area that we should all focus in on as well. Being able to pivot to COVID um, is a good example. And then really starting to think about how institutions like UTA, um, kind of bigger, broader base are developing talent pipelines for entrepreneurship, for different industries. Are we connected enough with employers to understand exactly what we need to be doing in order to prepare our students for the jobs that are gonna be here tomorrow, today? Um, and in the future. So those would be some of the things that I would look forward to. And I know a lot of discussions are being had around those areas. They absolutely are. Thank you, Lolene. And thank you to all of our panelists. You gave us such great information today, shared so many insights. And I think here at the end, you definitely gave us a lot to aspire to. Um, UTA is just a, a fantastic place to be. This North Texas ecosystem is one that's dynamic and growing every day around entrepreneurship. And I'm just so thrilled that each of you was able to make time and, and join us here today. So with that, thank you, everyone. And if you have a chance, you can join us, continue this conversation in Microsoft Teams at 430 this afternoon. And we will put some information in there about how you can connect with us via email to do that. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>